Cooper. Welcome back, Road to Indy TV fans, and welcome to a foggy California day here in Monterey Bay. We're here for the Monterey Grand Prix, race two of Indy Lights coming up this morning. Not sure if we're on a delay, Rob. I mean, we've seen lots of fog yeah. here at uh, Laguna Seca. It's a typical morning at it this is. racetrack. You never know what happens. Sometimes the fog will roll in. We have to go on a bit of a hold, but we do have drivers in the NASA series on the track right now. So looks like we may be good to go for Indy Lights when we go for race two. It's interesting, the fog here, you know, IndyCar had their practice this morning, and it seemed like the fog actually got a little bit worse. That's you know, right. you expect it to get better. I woke up in the hotel today. It was sunny. Yeah. Everything was fine. And then the fog finds its way here in, uh, in Monterey. Pretty interesting. That is one of the, uh, the specialties of Laguna Seca here is you never know what you're going to get for weather. When I was rolling in actually at 8 o'clock this morning, it started to sprinkle. It was like a, almost a sprinkle mist. I'm like, that. Nah, this is going to be really interesting. We expect it to burn off. It normally always does here. We had a great day yesterday, like 75 degrees, sunshine, hoping for another day here today. Uh, but I think right now it's all, all championship talk, right? It's Kyle Kirkwood and David Malouk. is a big win for Kirkwood yesterday. They're both on the front row, obviously. Uh, big win for Kirkwood yeah. yesterday. It's interesting. I ran into David Malukas at dinner at the uh, Fisherman's Wharf Pier. All right. And the confidence wasn't exuberating mm. with David Malukas. And he's a pretty confident kid. One thing he told me at the start of the season at the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, he said, I've got zero expectations for this year. And yesterday, I reminded him of that. I said, hey, zero expectations. You don't know what you got yeah. going into this race. Eight points isn't a lot, Rob. No. We've seen eight points yeah. swing, and it's funny. You get a guy like Kyle Kirkwood with some momentum. We know he's dangerous. We know that he's uh, he's won the first two rungs of the road to Indy. Why couldn't he win a third? But eight points is not a very big lead. Usually at this point in the season, he's uh, he's stretched it out a little more. But it's, it's interesting because there's a feel almost with Kirkwood, and I think with the entire Indy Lights program right now, that Kirkwood kind of maybe has the upper hand right now because uh, on a really good run, uh, 11 races, the last 11 races, he's been first or second in all but one race, and that was when he was leading and had a mechanical failure at, at Road America. So he's on this amazing stretch right now. I interviewed him at the Cooper Tire stage last night, and there was a quiet confidence. But he, because he's a veteran, he knows long way from over. you got to get through turn one and two already here. Then we go to mid-Ohio. Same thing could happen. Although he's very confident, I think he knows he can win here today. Um, he still really believes that this thing's wide open. Well, it's interesting. He might have been quietly confident with you, but when I had him on the post show, he was... Uh, well, he, he, just, yeah. he just won. He's just rolling For sure. It, right? And not yeah. only that, you know what? <laughs> He brought up the fact, and, and I know this, you know, I call it Mid-Ohio, the Andretti Graveyard. I mean, not only is Kyle very handy around Mid-Ohio sports car good. course, but Andretti Autosport, I don't, when's the last time they've lost a race there? Yeah, I, I will say this, that after the event that we had at Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Oval event, the double header we did there on the, the Sunday after that uh, last race, I asked both David Malukas and uh, Kyle Kirkwood about Mid-Ohio. What do you think is going to happen there? Maluka said they got better and better, and even even Kyle, he admitted that uh, while they came out of the gate really strongly when we were back there uh, earlier this year, he said that the HMD crew did close up by the end of the weekend, and it may be more of a level playing field when we get there in October. Well, one thing, Rob, that I brought up with Kyle yesterday, I asked him why all of a sudden he's found this dominating form that he's kind of not had all year. He's won races, yep. but, I mean, yesterday... <laughs> I was in the booth. I couldn't believe the lead he pulled out after the yellow flag and after the caution Indeed. period. Yeah. And I said, well, you found this dominating form, and your Andretti teammates seem to have lost the form. I asked him if, you know, is he changing the development of the setup? What, what answers that question? Yeah. And he basically said, no, it's, it's the same thing we've been doing all year. His engineer and him, Doug Zister, seem to be clicking at the right time in the season. The one thing HMD has got going for them is you've got four cars in the hunt versus Andretti's one and then call it done yeah 
Yeah, and, and that that is big because HMD has been strong over this stretch run. We saw it at Portland when they, they locked out the front two rows with all four of their drivers, including the rookie Manuel Suleiman, who came into Portland on his debut. He has been strong here as well. That's You said it yesterday. With all those HMD drivers up front, you thought that maybe David Malukas would come through, get some help from the teammates. No help whatsoever. I thought that was really interesting yesterday. Obviously, you don't want to see team tactics, but kind of surprised that maybe Linus Lundqvist and Benjamin Peterson might not have let David Malukas by to get to second to keep this championship tight. Well, one thing we've got to bring up is the fact that, yes, HMD Motorsports with Global Racing Group is one team, but it's also very much two teams that two came entries. together. Yeah. Linus Lundqvist and Benjamin Peterson are on the global side of HMD. Yep. So I, I wasn't surprised okay. when they didn't yep. let him by. I'm going, Benjamin was proud of that fifth podium this year. He deserved year. it, yeah. Linus needs performances if he wants to break his way into IndyCar. He needs those those podiums. He needs a win, yeah. really. Yeah, he does. What I was surprised is at the start of the race, and Kyle Kirkwood mentioned it, and then I discussed it with him, and I even discussed it with you privately. I could not believe that Global Racing Group and HMD didn't get together at the start of the race and go, okay, everybody's got one more new set of Cooper Tire slicks. Yep. Let's make sure we stagger it so that we beat Kyle in one of the races. Because that really should be five to eight tenths of a second at the end of the race. And now everybody's on the same strategy. Everybody at the top right now uh, going out for race two is on used Cooper Tire sli slicks. Yep. Very confusing where the miscommunication yeah. came from. You mentioned yesterday you figured that Kyle Kirkwood would want to cover whatever they were doing, but they, it was actually a change on pit lane, I believe, as well. Yes. They they came out on a certain set of tires, changed on pit lane, kind of going back and forth some of the strategy. Kirkwood wanted to cover whatever Malukas was doing, knowing how close they were in the end to be able to, of course, take advantage of his pole position. He'll do it again, but I love this. Into turn number one, P1 and P2 in the championship, side by side. And it's going to be interesting, Rob. I solely think that turn one here or turn two yeah, because the kink is turn one yeah. i think you can rail the outside we've seen it before many times you got to get deep into the corner you got to get the car to rotate on the outside of the racetrack you've raced here before outside of the racetrack is kind of tough sometimes maybe not quite the grip you want but as long as you can get around the outside and beat that driver to the apex and then the exit that's what's key if i'm David Malukas, and if I'm Global Racing Group or HMD Motorsports, I'm going, how is Kyle so fast on those first yeah. three or five laps? Is he stiffer? You know, usually if you're stiffer on the car springs, it's activating the tires more, it's working them more. So I hope they did their homework last night to figure out how he's so fast on those first three laps. Because really, you know, once you're in the lead, you can defend and you have a chance. Yeah. But if you can't even get in the lead, Oh, that's a tough race. So you're a driver, and you're eight points back. There's three races still to go. You know that at Mid-Ohio, Andretti probably has a little bit of an advantage, right, in terms of their setup there. They were quick. What do you do, Parker, if you're David Malukas? How aggressive are you on the opening lap to make sure that you lead coming out of turn two? You're, if you're not <laughs> leading on the opening lap, this championship is withering away, oh, and you're yeah. hoping on luck. And yeah. I, I said it before on our, our pre-race, I think David needs to lead out of here in order to put the pressure on Andretti to falter Agreed. at Mid-Ohio Sports yeah. Car Course. Because if they go in knowing they're confident, knowing they just have to get through a couple second places, I mean, it's how can you not think yeah. that Kyle's Agreed. not going to be able to get a second place? That's it. And he and then going into a, an event where there's only two races, he's able to manage where he needs to be. He'll know how much of a point gap he has. He can finish second if he has to, to a Linus or to a David. To be able to have that gap gives you a little more wiggle room. Well, what you want to do is you want to put the pressure to Andretti, kind of like at the start of the year where they got lost with setup. They tried to go out of the window and yeah. find something that wasn't their normal. And you saw when you put the Andretti juggernaut under that pressure, they crumbled a little bit. That they was did. the first time we've seen it. But as soon as they calmed down and got back to where they were, all of a sudden Kyle Kirkwood has uh, got a seven-second lead in three laps after a caution. Let's have a look at a couple of the, one of the other stories that we're really liking right now. Rasmus Lint coming here into the Indy Lights program. He was scheduled to run in 2020 with Bellardi Auto Racing, having finished second in the Indy Pro 2000 Championship of 2019. Bellardi closing the doors with the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the hiatus of Indy Lights. Uh, he's been running some sports cars. Rasmus Lint has the Swedish driver getting a chance to run for Hunkos Racing, a team that he finished second with and actually won here at uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca back in 2019. Gets his feet wet, comfortable at Portland. Really good yesterday. One of the fastest guys on the racetrack ends up P5. No, it's awesome, Rob. It's great to see the new driver additions. It's great to hear the teams rumbling. Yep. You know, I've heard lots of new teams coming to Indy Lights. There's I know good stuff happening right now, yeah. There is good stuff. Yeah. But before we get to that good stuff, we got to get to the racing action and the race two here at Indy Lights here at Laguna Seca. We're going to throw it and, and give a little more insight into HMD Autosport and uh, Global Racing Group.
We're here with one of the busiest men in the road to Indy Paddock, the general manager of HMD Motorsports, Mike Marini. Mike, it's been a rise to the top. You guys have competed in multiple series the last few years. It's been busy. Lots is going on. Tell me about what's on the horizon for HMD Motorsports. Well, I mean, we can't say too much yet, but uh, I think we're uh, we're looking to move some drivers up in the future. We're looking to to possibly move as a, as a team in the future. We don't know. I mean, right now our goal is Indy Lights, uh, championship race wins 2021 and 2022. Um, we're going to have four cars next year. We have four cars this year. We're, we have three on a couple races, but we're going to we're going to finish the season strong with four. Um, so the goal is just, you know, be the best that we can be now. Um, we have we're racing against the Giants and uh, but we're doing pretty well. So I think we're we have a lot of things going our way right now. We're here with a podium finisher in Indy Lights. He's a race winner across multiple countries in multiple series and the newest arrival on Road to Indy, Benjamin Peterson. Benjamin, you're in Indy Lights now. Obviously, the reason you came to Indy Lights is because it's the feeder to IndyCar. Tell me about that ambition. Yeah, I mean, the ambition is to go to IndyCar. Um, there isn't any better place to, to prepare for that than where, where we are right now in Indy Lights. Great team, great people, great minds. Um, everyone's really hungry to get better, even though, you know, the engineer we have on the team has been with this car also since it came out. So it's really easy to kind of get complacent, but um, really loving, loving the tight battle with Andretti every weekend. You've been on your own team pretty much from the start, and that is hard for any driver. Yeah, especially on the first couple of years, it, it was tough. You know, coming in, not knowing anybody, that's a big thing in racing is knowing connections, knowing the people. It was a struggle, but it was mentally, we just had to keep our heads up. We knew, we're, we're new, it's gonna be a struggle. And going through USF and Indy Pro 2000, you know, we actually were pretty decent, but when we made the jump to Indy Lights and going against Andretti, who were like 20 plus years, it was getting tough. Um, and 2019 was a tough year, but you know, we, we learned the people, we had turnovers in the team, we got the right crew, chemistry's great, and now going to 2021, I mean, we've had an amazing season. We're leading the team championship right now, beating Andretti. I am so happy, so thankful for the team, and it really just feels like family to me. Mike, it was great catching up. Best of luck in the future for HMD Motorsports, and we look forward to having you on the road, Tindy, for a long time to come. Awesome, thank you. Here is a bit of wisdom from your Uncle Cooper. Tires exist on a spectrum. On one end, you got too much tire. On the other, you don't get enough. Both ends are rip-offs. You're either paying for more than you need or needing more even after you pay. So if you want a tire that costs what tires should cost and does what tires should do, go right for the sweet spot. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast. No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the source. Topcon, always one step ahead. and motorsport enthusiasts. Lucas Oil School of Racing is America's number one formula car race school. Enjoy modern paddle shifters, pit speed limiter, and onboard video along with integrated data systems. Get started today with our two-day basic or advanced course. Lucas Oil School of Racing is the official school of the road to Indy. We can also qualify you for your SCCA license. Get started today by visiting us at www.lucasraceschool.com. 
as your uncle, I want you to know that on the road of life, there will be rough spots, and they will chew up your tires. I recently took a road trip to Greensville to attend the chili cook-off. Rough roads all the way down. I drove there on these Cooper Discoverer and Max tires. You know, they're made with the durability of off-road tires, but for on-road driving. Without them, we might never know the winning bean-to-meat ratio of a good chili. And those are the things in life, my friend, worth driving towards. So go with the Coopers. Cooper! I'm hungry now. With over 40 years in business, High Tide Boat Lifts is committed to elevating your craft. Whether you own a personal watercraft or a large yacht, we can design and create the perfect lift for your needs. At High Tide Boat Lifts, we understand that you've worked hard to get to a successful place in life. We'll ensure you have a hassle-free experience, maximizing the time you spend on your boat with family and friends, and supporting your dreams out on the open water. There is a bit of wisdom from your Uncle Cooper. Tires exist on a spectrum. On one end, you got too much tire. On the other, you don't get enough. Both ends are rip-offs. You're either paying for more than you need or needing more even after you pay. So if you want a tire that costs what tires should cost and does what tires should do, go right for the sweet spot. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At TopCon, we know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast? Real fast. No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. Topcon, always one step ahead. As we get set to go for the back end of the double header for the Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires. My name's Rob Howden. I am the voice of the road. Dandy, looking forward to what should be a tremendous race here today. We're in the middle of our stretch run through the finale at Mid Ohio Sports Car Course in two weeks. Only three races left to go here in this championship, and it is unbelievably tight. Only eight points separate first and second in the points, and we have three more races to go. One getting ready to roll here now. Let's have a look at the grid of the 11 cars who are ready to go racing here today with Indy Lights. 
Starting in the 11th position out of Covington, Louisiana in the Carlin Racing Pelican Energy number seven, it's Christian Bogle. Bogle, the rookie, starting in the 11th position. Row number five on the outside, only his uh, second weekend running here in the Indy Lights program, a former winner in the Indy Pro 2000 category. It'll be his fourth start in the series for HMD Motorsports out of Mexico. It is Manuel Suleiman in the number 59. Inside of that row from Sweden, a strong run yesterday to work his way to P5. Another driver just at his fourth start here in Indy Lights. He won here at uh, this particular racetrack, Laguna Seca, two years ago in the Indy Pro 2000 category of the year. Uh, that he also finished as the runner-up. Rasmus Lint out of Sweden for Hunkos Hollinger Racing. Starting in the ninth spot, he'll be a driver to keep your eye on here today. As He has good speed, that number 51 machine looking to work its way forward. Moving now to row number four on the outside from Miami, Florida for Andretti Steinbrenner Autosport. It's Devlin D. Francesco in the number 17, the PowerTap Hydrogen uh, sponsored entry. D. Francesco, second last year in the Indy Pro 2000 championship, and will be looking to work his way back up into the top five from its eighth place starting position. Inside of row four, starting in the seventh spot with the Road to Indy Scholarship, having won the Indy Pro 2000 championship last year out of Idaho. It is Stingray Rob for Hunkos Hall. Hollinger Racing in the number two. We'll go now to row number three on the outside. Former winner in the series at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course. He'll start sixth today out of Mount Kisco, New York. It's Robert McGinnis in the number 27 for Andretti Autosport. McGinnis starting in sixth. Inside of that row, it will be Benjamin Peterson out of Seattle, Washington for Global Racing Group with HMD. It's been a very strong second half of the season for Benjamin Peterson in the 24. Five straight top five finishes on the podium yesterday as well. He'll start P5 looking to continue this impressive streak. We'll go now to row number two on the outside from Singapore. It is Daniel Frost in the number 68 machine for Andretti Autosport. Denjet sponsorship on the side of the car. Frost, a couple of pole positions earlier this year, will want to work his way onto the podium here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. He'll launch from the outside of row number two. Inside of that row, a driver with two wins on the season so far would like to get that third victory out of Sweden for Global Racing Group with HMD Motorsports. It's Linus Lundqvist in the number 26 on the podium yesterday, finishing second. He'll try to go one more step higher and get that race win here today. 11 drivers in the field, two on the front row off pole. Actually, the driver second in points right now. Seven wins on the season as first and second in the points on the front row. Outside from Chicago, Illinois, as, as I said, seven wins. David Malukas in the number 79, starting in the second position. One of only two drivers to drop below the 115 mark in qualifying, a 114.944. David Malukas just eight points back in the standings, currently sitting in the second spot on the grid. Should be a very exciting run down to turn number two. But the driver with the great momentum right now, either finished first or second in the last 11 races, Kyle Kirkwood out of Jupiter, Florida, in the number 28. We'll start on the pole position for Andretti Autosport. Kirkwood again, as I said, winner yesterday and has huge momentum right now in the series. Eight-point lead with three races left to go. It was able to sweep the weekend at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course earlier in the season. That's where we go in two weeks' time for our finale. So Kirkwood trying to see if he can't strengthen that point lead before we head to Ohio to find out who will win the $1.25 million scholarship to move to the NTT IndyCar Series in 2022. So it's Kirkwood and Malukas on row one, Lundquist and Frost on row two, Peterson and McGinnis on row three, Rob and Francesco row four, Lint and Suleiman on row five, and Christian Bogle on row number six. Drivers now getting themselves buckled in, crew working with them to dial themselves in, of course, the focus on getting that opening lap done. And it, Interesting, of course, on this particular racetrack here, opening laps, those cold tire laps, so crucial to try to pull away if you possibly can. This track notoriously tough on tires as well. We had a practice session uh, on Friday morning, 45 minute session, drivers using a set of tires that they were able to bring over from the uh, event last weekend in Portland. Everybody hold mind of those fresh tires for qualifying. I don't know that anybody will be on fresh tires here. I think a set of scuffs for most of the drivers in the field here now. So it will be 
Uh, an interesting opening couple of laps. Can Kirkwood pull away like he did yesterday, or will David Malukas uh, get aggressive, trying to see if he can't work his way into the lead? And, and interesting to think about that is Kirkwood's caught HMD and Global Racing Group drivers both behind him and to his right side. Malukas starting on the outside of row one. Linus Lundquist right behind Kirkwood uh, in P3. So that should make things quite interesting in the opening run down the hill into turn number two. This Road to Indy program, of course, a three-level package of drivers working their way up the ladder. The Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship is the top level of the program. Kiko Porto out of Brazil currently leading the points. We'll see whether or not he's able to get that uh, championship when we get to Mid-Ohio on a scholarship worth uh, over $350,000 to make his move up into the uh, Indy Pro 2000 category. Indy Pro, of course, the second rung, one step below Indy Lights. And we have a great battle between a couple of USF 2000 champions in Christian Rasmussen and Braden Eves. Eves winning the title back in 2019. Rasmussen, the USF 2000 champion in 2020. They are in a head-to-head -head battle to see who will win that scholarship, which is worth over $700,000 to be able to work his way into Indy Lights next season. 11 drivers in the field here. We had a high of 13 throughout the season. A lot of great momentum for Indy Lights right now as at least three new teams potentially coming into the program, into the paddock for 2022. Expecting 15 to 17 drivers, maybe even as high as 18, depending on how things develop in the off season. But so much excitement right now as we get things ready for that new season. Still have to cap off the championships here, but again, as is the case as well in the NTT IndyCar Series, the silly season is hot. Hearing about drivers potentially coming in, those moving to different teams, a lot of different excitement happening for Indy Lights setting up for next year. Again, our drivers getting set to go. Those of you maybe new to this Road to Indy program, Drivers using the scholarships, as I had mentioned, to work their way all the way up into the NTT IndyCar Series, and we've seen some tremendous drivers. You just look at the last couple of years, of course, Colton Herta and Pato Award going head-to-head -head for the championship. Both those drivers, of course, starring here this weekend. Oliver Askew and Renus VK battling it out in 2019 for the championship. A great rivalry there. Both of those drivers as well uh, on the grid for today's NTT IndyCar Series event. And we're just looking at who will be the next stars coming out of this Indy Lights program to find their way into the big show. As we said, the champion of Indy Lights will get that $1.25 million scholarship that equates to three races, including a shot at the Indianapolis 500 next year. And so many of these drivers have worked their way through the entire rung. Kyle Kirkwood starting off as a champion back in 2000 and 18 winning the USF 2000 championship, 2019 won the Indy Pro 2000 championship here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca and trying to be the only driver in the history of this program to win all three levels in successive years. Kirkwood again starting on the pole alongside Malukas, Linus Lundquist and Daniel Frost on row number two, Benjamin Peterson and Robert McGinnis on row three, Stingray Robin Devlin De Francesco on row four, Rasmuth Lint and Manuel Suleiman on row five and Christian Bogle on row number six. Just about a minute away before we fire things up, folks, all these drivers with the Delara IL-15 chassis, Cooper tires all around, and 450 horsepower sitting behind them. These engines built for the series by Advanced Engine Research, AER, an iconic name in motorsports, and we're thrilled to have them as one of our partners here for the Indy Lights program. Joining me down here on pit lane actually will be Mike White from AER. He'll be the uh, guy to give me the command to fire these engines up and get things underway. Again, race number 18 of a 20 race series. Only two more races after this. The championship most definitely up for grabs. It's going to be an unbelievably exciting uh, run through to the finish to see who stands on top of the podium at our series banquet at Mid-Ohio. Folks, time to get things underway down here on pit lane. As I had said before, joining me here right now to provide the command to start engines from Advanced Engine Research, it will be Mike White. Mike, over to you. Gentlemen, start your AER engines. And with that, engines coming to life. Time to go racing, and we'll throw it back to Nick Yeoman and the IndyCar Radio Network. 
So the field of 11 roared to life here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Another look at your starting lineup. It is points leader Kyle Kirkwood, who has the top spot. He swept both pole positions so far this weekend. He will lead the field of the green flag. And to his outside, it'll be David Malukas, who is just nine points behind him. One, two in the championship. We'll line up one, two for this race, barreling down towards that Andretti hairpin. In row number two, Linus Lundquist to Daniel Frost. Row three sees Benjamin Peterson and Robert McGinnis. In row four, Stingray Rob and Devlin DeFrancesco in that bright yellow car, number 17. Row five, Rasmus Lind and Manuel Suleiman, both in their second weekends competing in the Indy Light Series presented by Cooper Tires. And good news with Christian Bogle, who had issues yesterday. That Carlin car has been presented to the grid. He will start shotgun on the field. And as the uh, drivers roll out uh, onto the racetrack, Davey. It kicks off what has uh, been going to be an exciting Sunday here at Laguna Seca. Of course, the IndyCar Series race coming up as well, and uh, all of these drivers hoping that they can one day compete in the Firestone Grand Prix of Monterey. Yeah, absolutely. What a busy morning it has been here at this race facility. We, it was as soon as the sun somewhat peeped through those that fog and that little bit of mist in the air, there's been a car on track of some sort or another, so very active morning. It's not going to slow down. As soon as this Indy Lights race is over, we go straight into the Indy Car Series race, and uh, it's a, actually an a active day here at Laguna Seca. A uh, good opportunity to check in with our two pit reporters as these drivers get some heat into those Cooper tires here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. We start with Rob Howden. Hello, Rob. Hey, Dick. How are you? The traditional fog that we have here oftentimes in the morning at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca burning off already. I can start to see some of the blue skies coming through the cloud. 63 degrees here trackside. It's going to be a tremendous day. One interesting thing I saw, Nick, as they started to roll their way up pit lane, I mentioned earlier the fact that everybody uh, on those scuffed tires, but I did see fresh rubber on Stingray Rob. They may have held a set of tires for Stingray. We'll see if that plays out for him later on in the race. And Alex Wolf, uh, give me a storyline, someone you're keeping an eye on here as we're set to go racing for 35 laps. Well, the guy that I'm keeping an eye on, of course, there's the title battle of Kirkwood against Malukas. You have Linus Lundquist, who's been really a guy on the charge all through the season. But Benjamin P Peterson, a great run, making it to the podium yesterday. And Rasmus Lind, just his second race weekend with Hunko's Racing here in Indy Lights, looked very impressive. And he's a driver that's under the watchful eye of Formula One IndyCar standout Stefan Johansson. So those are a couple of youngsters with an eye on towards not only today, but the future in the Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires. Yeah, I like that pick of, uh, of Rasmus Lind. He starts ninth, but yesterday he was strong, ran right to the fifth spot and was uh, pressuring some of those of, of the usual folks that we see at the front of the field, including uh, one of our championship contenders, uh, David Malukas. So Rasmus Lind, a good one to keep an eye on. And then, of course, as Alex mentioned, Benjamin Peterson, who has been on the podium in three of the last five races. A field making their way for the final time. We've got the start-finish line, the front of the field, back half of the field making its way out of the corkscrew as, again, these drivers get two parade laps before we go racing for 35 laps. Five laps longer, Davey, than yesterday's race, so uh, an opportunity for them to uh, manage those Cooper tires. you got to save them for five additional laps today. Yeah, they did a really good job yesterday managing the tires. It seemed like everybody had pretty much the same at the start of the race to the end. So I don't really expect anything different, although I think it's going to be less wear on these tires with a little bit cooler conditions today. So I think uh, the tire dag would probably be less than it was yesterday, actually, even with five more laps. Michael Young, I know visibility was a little rough for you down there in turns two, three, four, and five during the IndyCar warm-up session. Looks like things have burned off. Pretty nice afternoon there at uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. It is gorgeous, shaping up to be a fantastic day. And as Rob Howden said, the sun's starting to peek through. We can see some blue skies as the pace car brings this 11-car field through the turn four, five portion of the circuit. Pace car now making its way through turn number five. Drivers trying to get some heat into those Cooper tires, as Davey Hamilton said. A very cool morning, not expecting much tire wear, but they've got to get through this race and try to keep contact with Kyle Kirkwood, who was so good yesterday, able to check out from the field, I believe, eight seconds by the time race number one was over. Looking forward to a good one here at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca, Nick. It looks like Christian Bogle made a uh, late trip to pit lane during this uh, first of, of two parade laps. That Carlin racing machine quickly hustling to tag the tail end of the field. 
Uh, the good news for Bogle, he's not going to lose any positions. He was starting shotgun on the field. Lights, though, Jake Query are off on the pace car as they make their way out of the corkscrew as we are about to go racing at WeatherTech Raceway. And the real key here is going to be as Kyle Kirkwood gets right on the rear of the pace car into turn number 10 and then backs up just a little bit. Next time they come by here after this race begins, is this the order they'll be running? Because Kirkwood, as Davey talked about, wants to make sure he's aware of the aggression behind him. Field working their way through turn number 11 as we get set to go racing here at WeatherTech Raceway at Laguna Seca. How aggressive will the championship duo be towards each other in row number one in corner number two? Out of the final corner, little tire smoke in the back half of the field, but they accelerate. Kyle Kirkwood gets a nice jump over David Malukas as they roar down towards turn number two. Kyle Kirkwood will remain in that lead with uh, David Malukas stalking him for second, but Linus Lundquist, a teammate to David Malukas, those two nearly make contact at the exit of turn number two. Now Linus Lundquist has Daniel Frost on his rear wing, but Kyle Kirkwood making his way through turn number four will check out to about a five car length advantage over David Malukas. Then it's Linus Lundquist, Daniel Frost, that battle for fifth right now, Benjamin Peterson and Robert McGinnis. They go battle side by side nearly as Devlin DeFrancesco also joined that battle of the field, climbs the hill to turn six. Like a racehorse out of the gates, Kyle Kirkwood took that green flag and shot to the advantage as he leads them up the hill towards the corkscrew. His advantage over Kyle Kirkwood, or excuse me, over Malukas is about five or six car lengths. Then it's Linus Lundquist who runs in third. They make their way out of the corkscrew for the first time. Kirkwood yesterday was so brilliant in making sure that he did not have any tactical errors over the course of 30 laps. Going to have to do it for five more today, but he is already through turn number 11, opening up a 10 car length advantage. Bit of an issue at the back of the field, Davey. Devlin Francesco and Stingray Rob not playing nice out of turn nine. Yeah, Stingray Rob actually got to the outside of, uh, of DeFrancesco, and DeFrancesco absolutely didn't leave him any room coming off that turn seven. It's a downhill left-hander, a lot of momentum through there, a lot of G-forces through that corner as well. Heavy steering, but uh, pretty much pushed him right off the racetrack. Race leader Kyle Kirkwood leaving turn number three, Michael. Making his way now through turn number four. Hits the right side on that curbing and then lets that car swing out. Puts those left sides on that curbing, but already has a 15 car length advantage over David Malukas. Trying to stretch out this championship points lead. David Malukas has Linus Lundquist about four car lengths behind him. Daniel Frost, Benjamin Peterson, they're your top five. And what do those 15 car lengths that Michael described look like on the stopwatch? They look like two full seconds. The advantage for Kyle Kirkwood. He's already at the top of the hill, bending that car to the left to make his way down the corkscrew. It's a five and a half story drop before they jump into the eyes of Jake Query. Kyle Kirkwood writing the same story as yesterday, and that is so far so good running up front. Malukas then, the real battle might be right now for third. Lundquist has it, but you have Daniel Frost that is now closing in with a car length and a half. Yeah, Daniel Frost with a good fourth place qualifying uh, effort. He qualified ahead of Benjamin Peterson, who was up there most of yesterday. Those three cars nose to tail. Lundquist runs third, Frost runs fourth, and then it's Benjamin Peterson in fifth. Michael, it's a good battle heading to turn number two. Yeah, Benjamin Peterson trying to close in on that rear wing of Daniel Frost. They really slowed down through the exit of turn number two and stay that way through turn number three, then really pick up the throttle as they make their way through turn number four. Kyle Kirk Kirkwood still about a 15 to 20 car length advantage. Looks like he's gapped him a little bit more. David Malukas runs by himself in second. Then it's Linus Lundquist in third. And that battle again shaping up for the fourth position. It's Daniel Frost in fourth. Benjamin Peterson in fifth. Robert McGinnis not too far behind in sixth. It's another four tenths of a second added to Kyle Kirkwood's lead over David Malukas. 2.4 as they head towards the corkscrew. But we are keeping in our eyes on the battle for third. Lundquist in that first orange and black car. He's got Daniel Frost all over the gearbox, all over the rear wing. Jake, as they race their way back down the hill out of turn nine. David Malukas got a little bit loose, by the way, entering into turn number 10, coming off that elevation change, but was able to save it. Then Lundquist and then Frost. Peterson is now starting to close in on Frost. That might be Frost's bigger concern, Nick. Yeah, he is uh, in between those two orange and black HMD Global Racing Group teammates. 
would like to focus on ahead to grab third, but Michael, he's got Benjamin Peterson about four car lengths back as they get on the brakes into two. Yeah, and Peterson really tucks his car, those left sides, right on the apex of that hairpin in turn number two. That'll allow him to close into about a car length behind Daniel Frost. This is the battle for that fourth position as Kyle Kirkwood again has a bad, fast race car. He's checked out. Malukas by himself in second. Linus Lundquist, and again, that battle for the fourth position. Daniel Frost with a very nice run out of turn number four, negotiates turn number five. Daniel Frost, three car lengths ahead of Benjamin Peterson. And Malukas uh, about 2.6 seconds back now, but the best battle continues to be for fourth as Daniel Frost trying to hang on. He's starting to lose the rear of that 26 car of Linus Lundquist, and boy, Benjamin Peterson closes to within a car length. That car gets really sideways, though, exiting the corkscrew. Jakey's going to have to gather it back up. Peterson giving chase to Frost at a nine. And Peterson kind of looking from both angles, if you will, on Frost. Started high, then went low, entering turn number 10. Not able to make up any ground. He's about a half a car length back. The other car, by the way, that has had a little bit of movement here early on, that is Stingray Rob. Rob Howden mentioned he started out on fresh tires. Started seventh. He's dropped two spots down to ninth. Yep, but of course, uh, he had an incident early on with Devlin DeFrancesco, so Stingray Rob's going to have to gather it back up as we work lap number four of 35. Davey Hamilton, Kyle Kirkwood doing exactly what the entire field didn't want to see, 2.9 seconds in just four laps. Yeah, over the guy chasing him down in the championship, Malukas, and then Malukas has a fairly good lead over Lundquist as well, but three seconds back right now, Kirkwood just continues just to pound away just a tenth here and a tenth there and now uh, as this race continues on it could stretch back to that six or seven second lead like we seen yesterday and we've been watching some of the battles throughout the course of the field Davey Daniel Frost splitting those two global racing group HMD drivers but uh, those guys can't get away from each other mid-pack I mean clean air seems to be pretty king here at uh, at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca and none of those drivers have it right now yeah you know it's uh, even even uh, the two-seater I know you can't compare that but uh, we we run close to speeds of these cars I mean we're off a bit but dirty air even in that it really affects these cars we we're in a line of five drive around and and then yeah, out in front, sometimes you get clean air. It's like, wow, what a difference it makes. So that's just in that car. So when you get in these uh, these Indy Lights cars and Indy cars, it makes even a larger difference. So clean air, as you said, clean air is king. But though you know, from about third place all the way down, Nick, to really Stingray Rob in ninth, there there's nose to tell on top of each other. There's one mistake, somebody could uh, gain or lose a lot of ground. Guys mentioned that uh, Stingray, one of those drivers who's on fresh tires, Davey, how important is it to maximize those things right at the uh, at the start of the race, or do you conserve to make sure that they'll last for 35 Yeah, minutes? no, I think you go for it. I think he had to, and I think that's what he was doing when he got on the outside of DeFrancesco. It just unfortunately, DeFrancesco took a little extra space coming off turn seven, and or turn eight, I'm sorry, and pushed him, uh, pretty much pushed him out of the way, and, and uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes, so he lost that ground. Now, the longer the race goes, the more the tires are going to equalize. They're going to be the same amount of grip for him, even though they're new tires over the, the, the team to put scuffed on. Back down the hill, Kyle Kirkwood's advantage now 3.4 seconds. So he is uh, continuing to extend it two, three, maybe four tenths of a second per lap here on lap number five. His points advantage has grown as they run from nine up to 15 with just two races remaining. One doubleheader weekend at Mid-Ohio, two weeks from today remaining on the schedule. The good news for David Malukas, uh, Michael Young, it does not appear like Linus Lundquist is really challenging him for that second spot as they run. No, it's kind of settled down, at least uh, for David Malukas and Linus Lundquist, as Kyle Kirkwood makes his way through turn number four. He will now be about halfway between four and five. David Malukas really kind of keep a track with him. Once that two and a half second gap emerged, it looks like David Malukas is able to hold at least that two and a half second deficit. Then it's Linus Lundquist, Daniel Frost, and Benjamin Peterson. That battle has settled down. Robert McGinnis runs in that sixth position, and he and Devlin DeFrancesco, the two Andretti Autosport drivers, probably the closest battle we have currently here at WeatherTech Raceway. Yep, middle of the pack. Things are starting to settle down. Again, they were all separated by one or two car lengths for about the first four or five laps 
as guys thought about and entertained making passes. But as Michael pointed out, Jake, things start to settle out, and some of those gaps starting to grow three, four, five car lengths throughout the field. Yeah, and the other trick right now on the racetrack is quite simply this. If you think about when you're sitting at home and there are sunbeams coming through the window in areas of your flooring that all of a sudden have sunlight on them, that's kind of what the racetrack is experiencing right now because of the way this fog is burning off. It was an area into turn number 11 where suddenly it was sun drenched. Now it's a little bit behind cloud cover, but that might play into just kind of dancing around for the drivers in terms of the light that they're moving in and out of throughout the course of the racetrack. But right now, everybody's starting to balance out. This is what we saw yesterday, Nick. Then in the later stages of the races, when everybody realizes the clock is ticking is when it becomes go time. But we're at race pace right now, and Kyle Kirkwood likes what he sees. Davey battle for eighth looks to be pretty good. That's Rasmus Lynn who put two uh, Cooper tires off the racetrack moments ago. That allowed Stingray Rob to close as they make their way out of turn yeah, six. Yeah, and that's what uh, you hope that happens is that somebody in front of you makes that mistake. Now, those are teammate cars, and uh, they don't want to uh, get into each other, that's for sure. But it seems now that they're kind of even back out. But Stingray Rob, did he made a good run out of it, but just couldn't quite make the pass happen. Yep, that those two are teammates for Hunkos Hollinger Racing. And uh, kind of some cool news, Davey, over the last couple of weeks as they've announced Ricardo Hunkos' team after an absence uh, here over the last year or two. They are set to go IndyCar racing full-time in 2022, a driver to be announced. Callum Eilat has been in that car uh, last week at Portland again this week and will be in that car at, uh, at uh, the final race of the season in Long Beach. But uh, so good to see Ricardo Junco's back in the sport and uh, back at IndyCar Racing in 2022. Well, he's a guy that never never gave up, right, Nick? I mean, he had a team. He struggled with it as far as the IndyCar side of it goes, just not having the results or the funding really to do it the way he wanted to. As we know, plenty of wins and championships in this, the lower divisions, but uh, wants to be in the, the elite IndyCar series. And now it looks like a really good opportunity to do that. Brings in a partner. A uh, partner is an incredible guy. has been involved with Formula One, comes over to IndyCar. Uh, it should be a good marriage there. And now it's all on driver hunt. Who are they going to put in that cockpit? Who are they going to have as far as engineers with that team? And, and how, how fast are they going to grow it? So it's good. It's a great opportunity. It's good to see a guy that continues to just work hard to get to the IndyCar Series have it finally happen. Yeah, and some, some financial backing with the partnership uh, is going to help a lot because sponsorship dollars just so hard to find. You know, David, we, we talk so much about that incredible story when Kyle Kaiser uh, knocked out, you know, McLaren and Fernando Alonso to qualify for the Indianapolis 500. I loved that after he qualified for that race, that car had, you know, about 100 different small sponsorship stickers all over it, <laughs> lots of different companies that wanted to get involved. I mean, Ricardo Juncos, he's doing it the hard way, but, uh, boy, the, the hard work is, is already starting to pay off. Yeah, and one thing that, that he has to offer is a lot. Uh, he, he has experience. He has a fantastic uh, shop right there in Indianapolis, right in Speedway, Indiana, actually. Um, he has the cars, the equipment, the people. He just needed some funding to, uh, to help him make sure the cars were on racetrack and doing it properly. So it seems that maybe that part of the puzzle is solved now and, and that he could uh, he can go after some, uh, no, not only being full-time, but go after some wins and, and start uh, being competitive in the series. And uh, Rob Houghton, I want to bring you in because while certainly it hasn't been a great season for Ricardo's organization in terms of success in Indy Lights, this is a very, very proud organization up and down the road to Indy ladder system with lots of wins and championships. Yeah, no, indeed, for sure, Nick. You watch the, the races they've won. You, you, we just talk about the race here as well at, uh, at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Last time we were here, uh, they were able to win both races with Renus VK back in 2019, but they have been perennial front runners in both the Indy Lights and the Indy Pro 2000 category, a number of race wins, championship support with Renus VK. Uh, we saw the championship last year for Stingray Rob. They've just been in this program for so many years, and, and just the way Ricardo Hunkos does things, he's able to attract fantastic drivers to his program. A race win with a young driver named Reese Gold earlier this year as well. Reese getting his first Indy Pro 2000 win. You know that they'll continue to push, and this new program, this uh, elevation into the NTT IndyCar Series, will help extend the program they already have here with the Road to Indy. And you can move one of their drivers up a spot as Rasmus Lind has gotten around Devlin DeFrancesco to pick up the seventh position. Lind had a really stout top five performance yesterday. 
Uh, so as he starts to pull away from Devil D. Francesco, we'll see if that other Hunko Hollinger car of Stingray Rob, car number two, can start to catch that uh, neon yellow machine of Devil D. Francesco to contest the eighth position. Up front, it is Kyle Kirkwood, and that lead continues to grow a solid six seconds now over David Malukas. Make it 6.2 as he heads towards turn number 11. He'll complete lap number 10 here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. This is the Indy Light Series presented by Cooper Tires on the IndyCar Radio Network. Here's a look at your full field rundown. It is Kirkwood by 6.2 seconds over Malukas, who runs in the second spot. Linus Lundquist is third. Daniel Frost for Andretti Autosport runs in the fourth spot. Benjamin Peterson is fifth. Robert McGinnis is sixth. As we mentioned just moments ago, Rasmus Lind has moved into the seventh position. Devlin Francesco runs in eighth. Stingray Rob is ninth. Manuel Suleiman making his third start in the Indy Light Series uh, this weekend. He runs in the tenth position. And Christian Vogel for Carlin Racing, he just clicks off his tenth lap. Uh, he's a good 25 seconds behind the race leader running in the uh, 11th position. And uh, Davey Kirkwood, man, I'm just watching that gap between himself and Malukas, and that thing is headed in the wrong direction for David Malukas, already up to 6.5 seconds. You mentioned, I mean, he has just pounded this racetrack. Uh, no signs of slowing down at any point of this during this race. None whatsoever, Nick. I mean, last lap, 117.2 for leader Kirkwood, 117.8 for Malukas, that's not what he needs. It needs to be the other way around. It needs to catch up time. But uh, unfortunately, I think that he, that Kirkwood has figured this racetrack out. The car fits fits the, his style in this racetrack, and he just you know he just continues to check out. To get an idea of uh, just how fast Kyle Kirkwood is, he is heading into turn two now, right as David Malukas is crossing the start finish line. So that gap has grown to seven seconds. Let's go back to pit lane and check in again with Rob Hout. You know, Nick, just to give you guys some more insight into Kyle Kirkwood, many of you are obviously race fans that kind of just watch Indy Lights, maybe don't follow the entire road to Indy. It's not really a surprise to those of us in this community and in this paddock seeing what Kyle Kirkwood's done. He won the USF 2000 championship in similar fashion uh, back in 2018, was able to win the Indy Pro 2000 championship in 2019 here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. A much tougher weekend there as he was able to come away with the championship as some circumstances played out perfectly for him but this is something you don't want to let Kyle Kirkwood do if you're his competition he's the kind of driver that can really go on a streak he gets this level of confidence and this level of calm that come together I spoke with him yesterday at the Cooper tire stage and just to see the way he was kind of handling the situation right now with three more races to go the, the chance to have in that 1.25 million dollar scholarship in his pocket to find out where he could go next year in IndyCar you could just see how calm he was you just look at the body of work Nick what he's done over the last 11 races he's been first or second in the last 11 races the only one out of that uh, 11 races was the dnf for the uh, the part failure uh, at road america while he was leading literally the last 11 races he's been first or second this kid is on such a roll right now confidence momentum and as you said a real good feel for this track they tested here back in february the temperature very similar to what it was that particular test and i think that's played a little bit to them as well not a super hot weekend here so everything they learned back in february really coming to play here this weekend yeah and he didn't necessarily sound super confident that uh, he could put together this type of weekend heading into this race weekend uh, obviously has mid ohio circled at the uh, tail end of the calendar but boy the setup and the driver skill has been absolutely perfect for kyle kirkwood rob talked about the last 11 races it really all started in the doubleheader at detroit as indy lights returned to bumpy bell isle for the first time in many years and kirkwood swept that race weekend and in the last 11 races he's won seven of them davy you know it started out a little rough for kyle kirkwood he only won one of the first six races we we knew he was uh, very heralded coming in to this season with with all those accolades that Rob just talked about, it took a few races, but boy, after Detroit, he has caught fire. And as Rob talked about, it's either race wins or podiums uh, or, or, you know, a mechanical issue here or there. I mean, he's been absolutely on fire for the last really three, four months of this season. Absolutely has, Nick. And, and you know, I think it just get getting used to these race cars, just knowing what it takes. To, to be fast in these cars and the communication between him and the team just to make sure that they know each other's style and what they need to do to make the car fast. Obviously, they hit that with a home run. And, and you know, one thing that it looks pretty positive that Kyle Kirkwood's going to get that scholarship and, and to go on to the NTT IndyCar Series 
for several races, including the 500. But here's the question, Nick: Where would he go? Where, where, you know, where's a, a seat open at this point to, to take that money? He's obviously with Andretti Autosport. They currently run four cars in their series, but just rumor of it is uh, their their stable's full, and his name wasn't part of it from the rumors that I heard. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where he chooses to take that money to to uh, go IndyCar car racing. Will Andretti add a fifth car just for the races he has to run? Soon to see. Yeah, it is fascinating because uh, he certainly feels like one of these uh, next great things, the great talent that uh, only comes around every so often. And uh, his name has certainly been kicked around with uh, with some different team now owners. But uh, you're right, Andretti Autosport maybe not be uh, maybe don't don't write it down in ink quite yet. So gonna find out. 8.6 seconds, the advantage for. Kyle Kirkwood with 20 laps to go. Rob Howden, did you say you had something on pit lane? Yeah, let's grab Michael Andretti and ask that question. Michael, you guys here at Andretti Autosport have been a, a talent development team, obviously. Uh, guys like Pato Award, Oliver Askew have been able to win championships with you, but we didn't see them in an IndyCar uh, nowadays here with Andretti Autosport. You're lining up to potentially get another championship here, your third straight with Kyle Kirkwood. Is there an opportunity that we see him in an Andretti car next year? Well, we haven't won it yet, but uh, you know we have a good shot. Uh, he's doing an awesome job this year. He's a true talent, and uh, yeah, we'd love to keep him in the family some way. Uh, there's a lot of things working, and uh, you know, hopefully that there, you know, if it's not IndyCar, it could be somewhere else. So yeah, we're, we want to keep him in our family. You've had some great drivers. You look at the Patos and the Olivers and the other drivers you've had over the years. How do you rate Kyle? And what do you think are some of his positive attributes that allow him to do what he does in a race car? Well, I just, he, he's a complete driver, you know, he understands what's going on in the cockpit, he's very much in control, he, he has a good demeanor, I mean, he's, he's the real deal, so, you know, he's, he's as good as we've had come through our system, so, you know, as I said, you know, we, we want to figure out a way to keep him in our system. Thanks for the time. Thanks. Michael Andretti, guys, not saying a whole lot there, Nick Yeoman. They would like to keep him, but there is rumors of other drivers potentially getting that potential final seat at Andretti Autosport. But I'm telling you, this kid's a hot commodity. I'd be, I'd be hard-pressed to see uh, what Michael Andretti would do if he loses him, lets him slip away. Yeah, I mean, uh, David, the thing that stands out, as Michael said, we'd like to keep him in the family, if not an Indy car somewhere. <laughs> Tell you what, I mean, if he's poised to win his ninth race in a championship, this young man has uh, future IndyCar talent written all over him. I would hope that they'd be able to keep him somewhere uh, in the IndyCar paddock. Yeah, and you look at all the different divisions that uh, Michael's team is involved with or owns and has. I know F Formula E is one, right? I mean, Formula E, they're, they, they're active in that. Would, would he ship him over there maybe for a year or two until IndyCar seat opens up? Who knows? Yeah, as, and Rob just mentioned over Intercom, you know, Formula E. Uh, F1 is in is in his eyesight uh, of getting Michael's trying to get something rolling in the Formula One uh, uh, series as well, but that's yet to be done, so it's pretty hard to commit to that. But but you never uh, you never know. I mean, uh, obviously we we want, we know that Kirkwood wants to be an IndyCar. Davey, the interesting thing as well, as I said, I talked to, to Kyle yesterday on the Cooper Tire stage, and one of the things he did said, I, you know, I asked him about next year. Where are you with that? What are, is your mindset? Of course, totally focused on this race today, and of course, uh, in two weeks at Mid-Ohio, to see if he can't lock this championship down. As Michael said, it's not done. But what he did say was to win that scholarship, the $1.25 million extra, that's going to open up the possibilities of where he could go. If he doesn't have that scholarship, he's got some funding, it may be one team. But to, be at, to add that, uh, you know, million and a quarter kind of opens up that budget and the Nick could give us a couple of different opportunities that teams may be further up the grid. Yep, there's no doubt. I mean, it is amazing what uh, the Andersons and Cooper Tires and uh, and what they put together in terms of this scholarship prize, uh, it, it does. It opens up doors. It has for many, many years for these drivers and for Kyle Kirkwood. Uh, it, it certainly, it shores up a future, that's for sure. And it gives him some opportunities to, uh, to search around for a potential IndyCar ride heading into next year. He is your race leader. That uh, lead is now double digit in terms of seconds. It is 10.1 seconds. The advantage over Kyle Kirkwood as he is flat dominating here at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. David Malukas runs in second. Linus Lundquist is third. Lundquist is a good five seconds 
behind Malukas. So again, in terms of the podium, not a lot of action up front. Daniel Frost runs in fourth. He's been trying to hold off Benjamin Peterson, who is uh, within one second. Peterson runs in fifth. Robert McGinnis runs in sixth. Rasmus Lynn trying to track him down and does appear to be catching him. Uh, Lynn runs in the seventh spot. Devlin DeFrancesco is eighth. He's had his hands full with Stingray Rob trying to run him down for the battle for the eighth position. Uh, Stingray runs in ninth. Manuel Suleiman in tenth. Christian Bogle is 11th as we have reached the halfway point here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Good opportunity to uh, check in with our turn announcers uh, again. And uh, Michael Young, it has been a while since we've seen a lead quite like what Kyle Kirkwood has put together here in just 18 laps. Yeah, and it was impressive what he's done thus far. And I think that lead may grow even greater as David Maluk has put those left side Coopers off into the dirt at the exit of turn number four. Really had to keep control of it as the back end wiggled on him. He was able to bring it back on the circuit. But it is just so impressive to see this Road to Indy program, Nick. And as Rob had said, rarely do we see a talent like this make his way through this system. And just an impressive run again from Kyle Kirkwood thus far here again today. And Jake, not to be outdone, let's we should give a tip the cap to David Malukas. I mean, Kyle Kirkwood stealing the headlines today, but David Malukas has still won seven races and is in this championship hunt. A young man from Chicago, Illinois, that uh, has a future IndyCar talent written all over his fire suit as well. I was intrigued to see what David Malukas would be able to do heading into this season because he started to show those glimpses, I think, at the end of last year, Nick, and he has not disappointed. You are correct in the fact that it's been a great season for him, and that's not to say that it's a season that he still isn't going to be able to try to fight for that championship, but obviously he sees it now slipping away as Kyle Kirkwood just went into turn number 11 as a matter no I take that back that was Christian Bogle that I think might have had a problem through turn at number 11 we shall see but Kirkwood is so dominant here in this race Malukas can't be completely if you will turned off by that because he has had obviously a really good run here and got really good spirited battle at the outset of this race from Linus Lundquist just behind him but Kyle Kirkwood the leader is now into turn number 10 and setting up for turn number 11 to give you an idea how big that lead is he now goes out of my sight through turn number 11 still waiting and then boom there is David Malukas working his way through turn number 10 so a dominating performance here for Kyle Kirkwood but still a solid day for David Malukas as well. Yeah. 12 seconds the advantage now for Kirkwood over Malukas. Lundquist runs in third and then actually a pretty good battle. Daniel Frost has been running in the fourth uh, position for the majority of this race. Benjamin Peterson just won't let him get away. In fact, that's one of the things that impressed me most about Peterson. Boy, he has really tracked the rear wings of cars all year long. Michael, let's pick up that battle for fourth as they make their way into turn two. Yeah, they're through the Andretti hairpin, and Benjamin Peterson closes right in on that rear wing of Daniel Frost. Frost now will check back out about three car lengths or so as they make their way slowly through turn number three. And here's the turn, turn four. Linus Lundquist through, then it's Daniel Frost. He negotiates turn four and Benjamin Peterson about five car lengths behind Daniel Frost but I tell you Benjamin Peterson has been doing a very good job just trying to chop a second or two off or I should say a tenth or two off each and every time they come through this portion of the track they've already climbed the hill and they're up to turn number six yeah I just think about races this season Detroit comes to mind where Benjamin Peterson has just been really good at uh, hounding drivers late in races as he conserves those Cooper tires. That's exactly what he's doing again today. It's about two car lengths, the battle for fourth out of turn number nine. It's interesting because Daniel Frost for a while there was trying to get into the battle for third with Linus Lundquist and said it's that other black and orange machine that is the focus of his attention, talking about Benjamin Peterson who runs in fifth, but still just a car length and a half advantage through turn number 11 and an area now that is sun drenched on this racetrack. Davey just saw Daniel Frost have to swing that car a little wide at corner exit. Looks like he might be having a hard time putting the throttle all the way down at corner exit. Yes, he did. He took it out very wide, wide as you can go without going into the gravel. But still, he's, he's holding him off right now. I mean, right now, let's start at the top with Kirkwood. 13-second lead right now, 13 seconds. Pretty amazing. And then a uh, six-second lead from Malukas to Lundquist. But then Lundquist crossed a little bit closer. But right now, I think Frost is looking more in his rearview mirrors than he is ahead of him with Peterson right behind him. And any mistake made by those two, McGee, Guinness is uh, ready to uh, take hold of that spot as well. So it's pretty exciting through the middle of this field with, uh, I mean, 14 laps to go. 
Davey, how often do drivers use those those side view mirrors on either side when you're driving? I mean, I know when you're driving in your passenger car, they're key, but uh, when you're traveling at this speed, I would think conventional wisdom says, man, you have to be eyes forward, focused on hitting your braking points because of the speeds. Uh, those mirrors, though, how, how important do they play uh, a role in, in races like this? Well, so so as a driver coming from short track racing, I, I do not like mirrors when you're racing because too many times they're used for blocking. You look in the mirror and you're trying to, for example, I'm going to use Portland for an example with Malukas and Lundquist. Uh, Malukas seen him make a move. He goes down. He sees him in the mirror. He moves down, tries to block it. What does that do? It stacks them both up and Kirkwood passes them both to where I always like the racing where if there's no rear view mirrors, uh, you have to look forward all the time and you're playing offense, not defense, and I do like that. But in our kind, in this form of racing, you need mirrors because of pit stop, Nick. You have to be able to merge onto the racetrack and there's some other issues that go into it. You just have to have them. Now, uh, I like them and I think it's good for safety and a lot of things, like I said, with merging out on the pits, you know, merging in with traffic after pit stops and so forth. Uh, so if they're used in a positive way, but use them in a negative way, it slows you down. You always want to look ahead. You always want to charge. You don't want to look at those mirrors. Unfortunately, um, you do glance in them quite often, I think, just to know where you're at. Even Kirkwood with a huge lead, I'm sure he glances in it every now and then just to see where he stands, if there's anybody behind him. So um, it's a key opponent for sure. Uh, with 14 and a half seconds, the advantage, I'm guessing he doesn't see anyone at any point on this racetrack when he uses those mirrors. He may see drivers when he, you know, snakes his way around, turns two and three and four as they kind of the racetrack double back on itself. But, uh, boy, the advantage is just so strong for him. Uh, when we're talking about those uh, using those rearview mirrors, we're kind of referencing the battle for fourth as Daniel Frost has been trying to hold off Benjamin Peterson. That battle, Michael, once again, making its way out of turn number two. Yeah, Benjamin Peterson had a bit of understeer as he exited turn number four two laps ago, and that cost him about three car lengths. I will say Daniel Frost looks as if he's starting to close the gap between he and Linus Lundquist. That would be the battle for third. So third, fourth, and fifth running together as they exit turn number four. Linus Lundquist will lead those three cars through turn number five. All three putting the left tire, Coopers, onto that curving. Benjamin Peterson wiggling that front end. Looks like he had a bit of understeer again, but everything about five car lengths between third through fifth. Yep, just 12 laps to go here at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. Kyle Kirkwood, David Malukas have set sail. Well, we're keeping our battle on the I, uh, battle for third as they make their way out of the corkscrew. And Jake, it just feels like those three, Lundquist, Frost, and Peterson, are about as evenly matched as anybody on the racetrack. Yeah, and again, Linus Lundquist coming down the hill looked to bobble just a little bit. Frost not able to take advantage. He got a little bit wide through turn number 10, and that allowed Peterson to again close in but you've got to get onto the brakes in turn number 11. And of course, by the time Peterson did that, he saw the fact that Frost had gotten away. It's a four car length separation between the two. Yep, uh, again, starting to pull away just a little bit. Lundquist on the stopwatch. It's 1.3 seconds over fourth place running Daniel Frost. Frost has about uh, nine tenths of a second over uh, Benjamin Peterson, who runs in the fifth spot. Then it's Robert McGinnis, Rasmus Lind, Devil D. Francesco, Stingray Rob, Manuel Suleiman in 10th, and then Christian Bogle in 11th. Again, 11 laps to go in the Indy Lights Grand Prix of Monterey, race number two. This is round 18 of the championship. You've been able to listen to all of them right here on IndyCar Radio. It has been a really, really fun season. Kyle Kirkwood with eight wins. Looks like he's poised for his ninth. David Malukas with seven on the year. Linus Lundquist has scored a pair of victories as well. Both of those came early in the season. It has flat out been Malukas and Kirkwood week after week going back and forth, trading race wins, trading the points lead at numerous occasions. And that is why uh, with just two and call it a third of a race left, uh, the points advantage is still at just 15 as these teams will uh, head back to the East Coast, head back to the Midwest technically, uh, traveling from the West to the East to Mid-Ohio in two weeks' time for the final two races of the season where a championship will be crowned and scholarship prizes handed out for some very deserving drivers and teams. Of course, we're getting set for the Firestone Grand Prix of Monterey. Live coverage coming up 3 o'clock Eastern, 
noon Pacific time, right here on these same outlets, the IndyCar Radio Network, as well as our station affiliates. And we go across the network. And, uh, Davey, we've got another Indy Lights graduate on the pole position, Colton Herta, who I would imagine is going to try to do his best Kyle Kirkwood impression uh, when we go <laughs> racing a little bit later today. Yes, he is. I don't know. With 27 cars, uh, in the IndyCar Series starting today's race. Uh, a lot of competitive guys, fields really close. Do I think that Colton has what it takes to check out? Absolutely, I do. I don't know if he can do 17 seconds like Kirkwood is right now. I think it's going to be a little more competitive than that, but saying that is he's in the catbird seat right now. Uh, average winner, I think, starts 1.6 that, win, that wins these races for a long, long time. Very difficult to pass in this you know, very uh, technical racetrack. And uh, boy, Colton, what an outstanding job with his teammate Rossi, who needs a win, really, right, starting right beside him. Don't forget, sometimes third spot's a really good place to start behind uh, going down into turn one and two, and that's Will Power. Um, as we know, he continues uh, trying to win races and, and polls to, you know, set new records all over the place as well. Moments ago, just saw a big lockup for Robert McGinnis, who's running in the sixth spot. He uh, really skid of that right front tire heading towards the corkscrew as Rasmus Lind tries to run him down. McGinnis, of course, drives for Andretti Autosport. And this weekend, Davey, I mean, it, everything's coming up, Andretti Autosport, whether yeah. it be at Indy, Indy Lights with Kirkwood dominating. Uh, we mentioned Colton Herta on pole position, and he's going to have a teammate to his outside, Alexander Rossi in car 27, that Nap Autoports car, uh, starting to show some strength, some much-needed strength after what's been a really tough two-year span for Rossi. He looks like he's got a chance to win in his home state this weekend as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I don't want to put, put a cap on it yet. The first race isn't even, even over uh, with Kirkwood leaving it, but this could absolutely be an Andretti sweep for the weekend in the Indy Lights and IndyCar Series. Uh, they're the favorites in both divisions. Kirkwood now with an 18 second lead, 18.4 second lead over second place Malukas. And, and when you have Andretti Autosport teammates on the front row, Advantage goes to that team, no question about it. So we'll see if the Andretti Autosport team can hold on to those uh, front row spots and pick up a much needed win towards the end of the season at IndyCar in Indy Lights. Kyle Kirkwood is about eight laps from closing out his ninth win of the season. He has been dominant today. The advantage, 18.75 seconds over David Malukas. Malukas is, has just been just just been as uh, dominant as well as he runs in the second spot. Now 10 full seconds over Linus Lundquist. The Indy Light Series is, of course, the top road of the Road to Indy Ladders program uh, designed to give opportunities for open-wheel drivers to advance their careers heading towards the IndyCar Series. Nobody knows the road to Indy quite like Rob Howden. And uh, Rob, I know uh, championships still on the line in Indy Pro 2000 and USF 2000. A lot to go racing uh, for here towards the end of the season this fall. Yeah, Nick, once this checkered flag flies, there'll be only two more races left for Indy Lights, Indy Pro 2000 and USF 2000. And as you guys had mentioned, October 1st, 2nd and 3rd of the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course will crown our champions. The scholarships going to the drivers of course, winning all three of those levels, culminating in the $1.25 million scholarship for the Indy Lights winner. We got ourselves a pretty good battle in USF 2000. Kiko Porto, though with a decent advantage right now over Michael D. Orlando. Porto, the Brazilian who runs for D-Force Racing, had a great second half of the season. He leads over D. Orlando, the driver out of New York for Cape Motorsports. So they'll battle it out for that championship and the scholarship to move to Indy Pro. In the Indy Pro category, which is kind of cool, we have the driver's last two champions in USF 2000 actually going at it right now for Indy Pro. It's Christian Rasmussen for J. Howard Driver Development scrapping it out with Braden Eves from Exclusive Autosport. Those two drivers still very close in terms of the championship to win that scholarship worth over $700,000 to move to Indy Lights. And of course, as we know, we see what's happening on the racetrack right, na right now here with Cal Kirkwood. He's looking to cap off another sweep of a weekend. But all told, looking forward to being at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in a couple of weekends, Nick. All the coverage will be available on the Road to Indy app or Road to Indy.tv. Uh, should be some pretty exciting racing and again by the end of that weekend there'll be three very happy drivers knowing that their plans for 2022 are locked and loaded yep happy and, and most importantly deserving as well because uh the road to indy just like indycar goes to uh crisscrosses the united states multiple different types of tracks uh you know some of the the, the flat bumpy street circuits like st petersburg and detroit and 
course, some of these free-flowing road courses as well. Indy Lights gets to run on some ovals. I know, uh, who is it, Rob? Is it USF 2000 that gets to race it uh, there in Claremont at the Lucas Oil Raceway as well? I mean, a little short track racing for some of these young drivers as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. We run at Lucas Oil Raceway the Classic the night before the 500, many years before. Now it's the Carb Night Classic on Friday nights. They run the Freedom 75 for the drivers in USF 2000 and the Freedom 90 for the drivers in Indy Pro. Getting them a, a chance to get their feet wet in the ovals before they get up to the high speed Indy Lights cars. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Uh, let's focus in here in the last five or six laps, Michael. Pretty good battle. Robert McGinnis and Rasmus Lynn out of turn number five. It's a battle for sixth position. Robert McGinnis now makes his way up that hill to that left-hander of turn number five. Rasmus Lint has been able to close that gap. It's about four car lengths now, then about six back to Devlin DeFrancesco and Stingray Rob after that incident at the beginning of the race. He's able to close himself back on that rear wing of Devlin DeFrancesco. Yeah, really, you can kind of throw a blanket over those four cars as they're separated by two or three car lengths each. They get to the top of the corkscrew. It is, again, 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth. McGinnis, Lynn, DeFrancesco, and Stingray Rob. Jake, they're headed to you to turn number nine. Yep, Robert McGinnis will lead that quartet. As a matter of fact, he set up fairly aggressively entering into turn number 10. He got wide early, but Rasmus Lynn was not able to make up any ground. They worked their way now. You are correct in the fact that those four totally evenly spaced, throw a blanket on them, coming out of turn number 11. It's the navy and white of uh, McGinnis, the green car of Rasmus Lind, who's showing some pace, the yellow of DeFrancesco, the red and blue of Stingray Rob. Once again, they go down the hill towards turn number one, and uh, Michael Young, it's a good four-car battle for the sixth spot. Yeah, and those four cars make their way to turn number three as we see Robert McGinnis make his way through turn number four. Right behind him, as we said, Rasmus Lind, he's about three car lengths back. Then Devlin D. Francesco front end, a little bit of understeer there. And I think if anybody's going to have an opportunity to make a pass, it looks like Stingray Rob. He gets a nice run out of turn number five. It's McGinnis six, then Lind seventh, D. Francesco eighth, and Stingray Rob ninth. Davey, it's been a, a tough weekend. A lot of learning for Christian Bogle and his rookie campaign for the Indy Light Series presented by Cooper Tires moments ago. Missed the corkscrew, and uh, boy, front wings, a lot of times they're used for aerodynamics. That one looked like a snowplow. Yeah, the, he went way off. I mean, all, I mean, way into the gravel, spread rocks all over the, uh, the racetrack coming off the corkscrew right in front of our leader. It uh, doesn't look like the cars hurt any. They came in pulling some rocks out of the radiator inlets right now, but should be able to finish up this last few laps. Alex, that car uh, hasn't stayed blue very much this weekend as they're cleaning it up on pit lane. No, it unfortunately has not for the Carlin Racing Team. That number seven, Christian Vogel leads with gravel all over those tires. It goes out, and actually they had to go into that right side, side pod where the radiator is, and there is a whole lot of gravel right there that they had to clear out. I mean, it it definitely uh, is a lot there. I had to sort of stay on your toes and not get hit by the spray as it came out of the pits, but Christian Bogle, after they checked everything, made sure that the front wing was nice and secure, and now he is back out to try to finish this race. Yep, so he'll get back out uh, one lap down here on the closing laps here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Kirkwood, Malukas, Lundquist, Frost, Peters in the top five. Then it's Robert McGinnis in sixth, who is just holding on for dear life to try to hold on to that uh, sixth position and finish there. Rasmus Lynn is pressuring him. Devlin D. Francesco is there. So is Stingray Rob. Jake out of turn number nine back down the hill. Yeah, it felt like Stingray Rob kind of let that trio get away from him, but now all of a sudden he's closed in again on D. Francesco. Front of this pack is Robert McGinnis. Works his way now into turn number 11. He does so with Lynn just behind him, then D. Francesco, and then Rob. Once again, completely evenly spaced, a car length and a half running between six, seven, eight, and nine. And there's just three laps to go for this battle to be decided, Michael Young, as they go back towards turn number two. Yeah, and I really thought Stingray Rob had the best opportunity to maybe snag that eighth position away from Devlin DeFrancesco. This time around and through turn number three, Robert McGinnis about a four-car length advantage over Rasmus Lint. Then Devlin DeFrancesco able to close that gap between he and Rasmus Lint down to about three car lengths. All four of those cars make their way through turn number four. Now the left-hander of 
turn number five. Robert McGinnis, five car lengths over Rasmuth Lit. Two car lengths back to Devlin D. Francesco, and three back to Stingray Rob. Davey, they're searching, but boy, it is just so hard to set up a pass here at WeatherTech Raceway. It really is. As we mentioned at the start of the show, one of the funnest racetracks a race driver can go around with the elevation changes, the high speed, the low speed corners, the corkscrew, just has a little bit of everything. Really a blast to drive, but very frustrating when you're behind cars and can't make a move and can't overtake. So um, you gotta just be patient and continue to just hammer away and hope for pressuring the got car in front of you into a mistake. And this battle is taking place uh, again for the sixth position a good 44, call it 45 seconds behind our race leader, Kyle Kirkwood, who has the advantage with just two laps to go. We'll take one more look at that battle for sixth. Robert McGinnis, one more time, Michael, down into turn number two. And this time, Rasmuth Lint will close in on that rear wing, takes a different line than Robert McGinnis. Rasmuth Lint now closes it down to about three car legs, but McGinnis able to get back into the throttle as he makes his way through turn number three. This is the battle for sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Now Robert McGinnis stretches it back out as Rasmuth Lint dove deep into turn two, but it's McGinnis who's able to stretch that advantage back out about six car legs through turn number five, then Rasmuth Litt, Devlin Francesco, and the machine of Stingray Rob. They climb the hill and go underneath the VP bridge towards turn six. And Michael, you could turn your attention to turn number two very quickly because here comes our race leader. White flag is out for Kyle Kirkwood. This kid is a whole lot of something special. Makes his way through turn number three. And to give you an idea of how big this advantage is for Kyle Kirkwood as he makes his way through turn number four, David Malukas is just now crest the hill through turn number one. So Kyle Kirkwood through turn number five. David Malukas now through the Andretti hairpin. Here comes Kyle Kirkwood for the final time. He climbs the hill and up to turn number six. We were impressed yesterday after a late race caution that in just seven or eight laps, Kyle Kirkwood was able to win by seven seconds. He has a 26.4 second advantage over the entire field. He tiptoes his way into the corkscrew and blasts his way out. Kyle Kirkwood, Jake, into turn number nine for the final time. His performance is so good that the Sun wanted to be able to see it on every inch of the racetrack, and that's what he is getting right now. Kyle Kirkwood with the Sun completely blanketing now the WeatherTech Raceway at Laguna Seca comes for the final time of turn number 11. And he's going to swerve back and forth, laying a little Cooper tire rubber on the front straightaway, sees the twin checkered flags. It's win number nine for Kyle Kirkwood from Jupiter, Florida, as he takes the top spot to win and sweep the weekend here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. As the rest of the field makes their way towards the uh, checkered flag, let's get a good one last look. Jake Query, if you're still there, on that battle for the, uh, the sixth position with Robert McGinnis, they're making their way out of the carousel. Yeah, they work their way now down off of the carousel. Robert McGinnis has Raspin Lynn about two car lengths behind him. They have gapped now to DeFrancesco, who has the bigger concern of Stingray Rob, but that's how they run. Six, seven, eight, nine through turn number 11. Into that final corner, Robert McGinnis is going to accelerate and he's going to get the job done. He's going to hold off Rasmus Lind to take that sixth spot. Lind's going to finish seventh. Devil D. Francesco across the line in eighth, and Singray Rob will have to settle for ninth. But it is Kyle Kirkwood, the final margin, Davey Hamilton, 26 <laughs> seconds. I don't think I've seen that in many, many years covering the Indy Lights series. Yeah, pretty amazing. 26 seconds, and then. It's another 13 seconds from second to third. So not a very competitive race uh, towards the front of the field today, unfortunately. But it was very competitive in the middle from Frost down to Stingray Rob. Pretty exciting. All those cars within you know, just a few seconds. So uh, hard to pass, as we continue to say. But when you have a, a driver and a team and, and the, the car so perfectly for Kirkwood, uh, man, nothing's going to hold him back. Yeah, you're right. When uh, when Kyle Kirkwood likes a racetrack as much as he likes this one, it, it doesn't matter the shape of the track or the design. He was going to be absolutely untouchable. He scores again his ninth win of this season, and his points lead is now 15 markers over David Malukas, who again finishes in second. A very distant 26 seconds behind Linus Lundquist all by himself. He finishes third. Daniel Frost 
was close, about a second behind in the fourth position. Benjamin Peterson ended up fifth. So that, that battle that we talked about at the midway point of the race between Lundquist, Frost, and Peterson, no change in the final laps as Lundquist will grab the final step on the podium. Frost fourth, Peterson fifth. And then that battle towards the back of the pack that uh, was pretty good. Robert McGinnis holds on to hey, take the sixth spot. Rasmus Lynn seventh. Devlin D. Francesco eighth. Stingray Rob finishes ninth. About four seconds behind Stingray Rob was Manuel Suleiman. Final car on the lead lap. He comes home in tenth. Christian Bogle finishes 11th today. Uh, two laps down. And Kyle Kirkwood going to pop out of that race car and celebrate Another win. Davey, I mean, he got the job done this weekend. He's got mid-Ohio circled because of how good he is there. But uh, might we might look back at this weekend and say this is the weekend the championship was won. Yeah, I, I would think it is because we know how well he runs at mid-Ohio. Matter of fact, has he ever even lost at mid-Ohio in anything? I think he just dominates everything he gets in at mid-Ohio, including the Indy Lights race. So um, I think this really put a sticker on, or a seal on the championship for him because – this was the question mark that we thought, well, if Malukas has to do something, he has to do it here at Laguna because we know how good Kirkwood is at mid-Ohio. Yep, Malukas, no doubt, is going to uh, – he'll take a shot at mid-Ohio, but as you mentioned, it's going to take a big, big effort, the driver of car 79, to overcome Kyle Kirkwood at that place. But, uh, boy, Malukas has no reason to hang his head as he was clearly, again, the second-best car today as he finishes in second. Linus Lundquist does a good job. Rob holding on, uh, taking the third spot as he held off Frost and Peterson. We'll start with David Malukas. David, you threw everything you could at, uh, at this particular weekend here. You're in a championship battle, and that's really all you want at the start of the season, right? Give yourself a shot by the time we go to mid-Ohio at the end of the year. A solid run here today. You end up in second place. Give me your thoughts on the race itself. Yeah, I mean, after this, I'm going to go check his tires, see if there's Gorilla Glue or something on there. I mean, did you see the first lap? It's like he, he's just gone. I was like, man, are you sure those aren't like, so, like IndyCar or something? <laughs> Maybe he's in the wrong class. But, no, kudos to him. I mean, he, he was just, just gone. So I was kind of just ended up being by myself. And uh, I, I lost the gap to Linus there in the back, so I was just trying different lines, adjusting the bars. It was almost like a test day for me. But... No, I mean, I think we got everything that we could out of the HMD Motorsports car there. Uh, we definitely had some gains from yesterday, but, man, it was, uh, it was tough with uh, old tires and that many laps. But still, I'm very happy, and I'm still that we're, you know, it's close enough, I think, going into mid-Ohio. So hopefully it's going to be cooler there, and then maybe in the HMD Motorsports car is just, oh, it's, maybe it'll be like him, him now. So, but, yeah. Congrats on a good day, bud. Thank you. David Malukas, guys, coming in second position. 15 points behind, heading to mid-Ohio. But let's go now to victory lane and Alex Wolf with the race winner. Kyle Kirkwood, ninth win of the Indy Lights season, 30th in your road to Indy career. Have you run a uh, more perfect race than the one you had today? No, I have to say that was probably one of the best races I've had the entire year, maybe my entire career. You know, this weekend, it's been pretty effortless. That race right now, um, I was able to just get out front and just pull away, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. The car was absolutely phenomenal, and hopefully we can do the same at Mid-Ohio, but this points lead and what we did this weekend is pretty incredible. You talk about how effortless it was all weekend long. You know, it's sort of a cliche and an old uh, tale in racing, but when it got down towards the last laps, can you really hear every little sound that the car's making? Are you just hoping that everything uh, stays together with how perfect it's been going? You know, it's funny you mention that because when you're out front, that's all you can focus on is like, oh, what can happen now? Because we did have a mechanical at Road America when we felt we should have won. And I'm, I'm paying attention to my tires. I feel it start getting understeering. I'm like, oh, is something happening to them? But everything was fine. Everything was perfect. Um, it's just, I guess, when you're out there and you're just by yourself, it, only things can go wrong, right? So you tend to focus on all that, and fortunately nothing did. We were able to get that big gap and keep it there, and I couldn't be more thankful for the Andretti guys for giving me such a good set of wheels under me this weekend. Two weeks from now, two races, 15-point lead, and you go to really what's been almost your personal playground, Mid-Ohio, looking for this championship. Yeah, exactly. Mid-Ohio is a place that I love. It's probably my favorite track on the schedule, and to end it off there is super important for our championship, I believe. It's been a great weekend for you. Congratulations, and hope to see you close it out in two weeks. Thank you so much. That's Kyle Kirkwood. Let's head over to Rob Howden. Let's wrap things up here with Linus Lundquist. Linus, uh, obviously, we'd like to have a little bit more, but a couple of podiums are great. Uh, you put together a pretty solid body of work this year, P3 in the championship. Give me your thoughts on this race here today. Yeah, the race here today, we, we knew that we lacked some pace yesterday, so we, we wanted to try a couple of things to see if we can uh, close the gap. 
Um, I felt pretty confident, like maybe the first two, two three, four laps. Uh, but after that, we, um, yeah, we dropped off a little bit, and then it was just about holding on. So um, you know, we had to go. It didn't really go our way, but that how it goes sometimes. So uh, happy to be back on the podium. What's the mindset heading into Mid Ohio? Obviously, we hope to have you back in Indy Lights next year. I'm sure that's the plan. What is the mindset going to the finale? Nah, the the mindset is the same as always. It's to win. That's why we're here. So uh, we're gonna try to go and fight for race wins and pole positions and see what we can do. Hopefully, we can uh, you know uh, do a little bit of homework before going to Mid Ohio. But I'm sure that the H and D and Global guys will do that. Congrats on a good weekend. Thank you. Second and third for Linus Lundqvist, Nick. Young a couple of podiums for a young driver to Sweden who is very impressive and should he come back to Indy Lights next year would be the ultimate uh, contender for that title. Presentations, three very deserving drivers set to come up here onto the podium. And again, as we often say, the future stars of the NTT IndyCar Series. This is where we saw the Colton Herdas, the Pato Awards, the Oliver Askews, the Renus VKs, you name it. Let's bring the drivers up here who were able to get on the podium here today. Coming in third spot for Global Racing Group with HMD Motorsports, Linus Lundquist. Finishing in second position. It's going to be a great battle at Mid-Ohio to see who's going to win this championship. Another great run, another great top five for the driver out of Chicago for HMD Motorsports. P2 goes to David Malukas. We knew the stretch run was going to be exciting coming to the very end with these final races. This driver, of course, able to step up and get a couple of very crucial wins here today. Back-to-back -back jacks here at WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. Had a big round of applause for our point leader and race winner, Kyle Kirkwood! The talent on this uh, podium right now, absolutely unbelievable. And again, you'll see these drivers, all three, in the NTT IndyCar Series for the next decade or so. This is the future of this tremendous racing series, and we're proud to present them through the Indy Lights and Road to Indy, presented by Cooper Tires. Great to have these drivers along with us here. And again, these are the drivers who will follow in the footsteps of so many who have come out of this tremendous program. And Indy Lights this year, very, very high talent. Looking forward to next year in a big way. At least three new teams potentially coming into Indy Lights for 2022. Uh, prospecting maybe 15 to 17 drivers, if not more. It's going to be a tremendous year. And of course, uh, of course, with the IndyCar schedule coming out, you'll see where lights will be going here uh, in the coming weeks, I would expect, in terms of their schedule. But for us to see a driver like Kyle Kirkwood come through this rank, same with David Malukas through USF 2000 into Indy Pro and now to the top of the uh, program in Indy Lights, Awesome to see what they've been able to do and how they've been able to develop over the last a number of years. So we'll wrap things up here, folks. They're going to go to the champagne. We got one more hat. What are we doing here? Back to the yeah, back to our winners' hats, and then the champagne will fly for the drivers here in Indy Lights. One more time, folks, a round of applause for my podium here today. Linus Lundquist in third, David Maluka second, and the winner, his ninth win of the season and his 29th career road to Indy victory, Kyle Kirkwood winning here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Here is a bit of wisdom from your Uncle Cooper. Tires exist on a spectrum. On one end, you got too much tire. On the other, you don't get enough. Both ends are rip-offs. You're either paying for more than you need or needing more even after you pay. So if you want a tire that costs what tires should cost and does what tires should do, go right for the sweet spot. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! At Topcon. We know a thing or two about a smooth surface. Roads and highways, 
piece of cake. Airports, let's just say it'll be the smoothest landing you've ever had. But what about when you want to go fast, real fast? No, faster. We've helped cars go faster than they've ever gone before. Broken a few lap records along the way. Want the best paving performance? Go to the sewers. Topcon, always one step ahead. and motorsport enthusiasts. Lucas Oil School of Racing is America's number one formula car race school. Enjoy modern paddle shifters, pit speed limiter, and onboard video along with integrated data systems. Get started today with our two-day basic or advanced course. Lucas Oil School of Racing is the official school of the road to Indy. We can also qualify you for your SCCA license. Get started today by visiting us at www.lucasraceschool.com. As your uncle, I want you to know that on the road of life, there will be rough spots, and they will chew up your tires. I recently took a road trip to Greensville to attend the chili cook-off. Rough roads all the way down. I drove there on these Cooper Discoverer and Duramax tires. You know, they're made with the durability of off-road tires, but for on-road driving. Without them, we might never know the winning bean-to-meat ratio of a good chili. And those are the things in life, my friend, worth driving towards. So go with the Coopers. Cooper! I'm hungry now. With over 40 years in business, High Tide Boat Lifts is committed to elevating your craft. Whether you own a personal watercraft or a large yacht, we can design and create the perfect lift for your needs. At High Tide Boat Lifts, we understand that you've worked hard to get to a successful place in life. We'll ensure you have a hassle-free experience, maximizing the time you spend on your boat with family and friends, and supporting your dreams out on the open water.